I recently had a company approach me about reviewing a laser that's just recently been released here in Australia. The company called Omtech have released this particular laser and it is the Polar 350. This particular machine is a 50 watt CO2 laser and it has a working area of 510 by 300 millimeters. I thought that working area would be perfect for my desktop. What I didn't realize was they're gonna deliver a house. Yeah, I needed a forklift from next door to get it uh, into my studio. On the plus side, the laser cutter engraver was so well packaged that a nuclear bomb wouldn't damage it. The first thing you see on opening the box is this honeycomb grid. And what that does is actually provide a level stable surface for cutting the material. Also reducing the possibility of warping. Those orange straps will come in very handy when we pull out the machine later. That's a handy little quick guide manual to be used when you um, set up the machine. And to open up the front of the box, just to make it easier to access the machine and pull it out, there's these metal tabs and all I did was a pair of pliers and just um, bend it straight and then force the front cover off. You can really see how sturdy the packaging is and it needs it because that um, laser cutter is actually quite heavy. Definitely needed two people to move it, there's no way one person will be able to pick that up. You get some samples as well of some uh, base wood as well as some acrylic. Both pieces of material are three millimeters. And these are the rotary add-ons, so you can do cylindrical uh, objects like tumblers and glasses. And there's a pair of them, one um, is below the other. Now some of the specs regarding this machine, like I said earlier, is 50 watts. The maximum processing uh, speed is 500 millimeters per second. The connection's Wi-Fi, USB and Ethernet. I'll be using uh, USB. Now precision is pretty good, 0 0.0254 of a millimeter. Very precise. The air assist is what blows the smoke away from the actual laser head. Its power consumption is 600 watts. It's got a 5 megapixel um, camera just in the lid there. And also has a water chiller in the side of the machine. There are also some goodies inside the machine under the lid there. This is the 150mm duct as well as the duct reducer and that goes onto the extractor fan. Also the 120 millimeter duct. In this little box are some bits and pieces like the USB stick, uh, spare fuses, keys, cleaning swabs, texture, and um, that's your power as well as uh, some USB leads as well. That's the 60 watt extractor fans and that's controlled with a remote control. To install the honeycomb grid, it's just a matter of sliding out the tray, sliding in the honeycomb, there is a sensor right at the back of the tray, so make sure when you push the honeycomb in that it actually clicks. And then put the tray back in and you're almost ready to go. I must say, it's a great looking unit. Now we need to set up the extraction fan using this 120mm duct as well as the duct clamp. Now there's supposed to be three of these in the unit, but I only got two. Not to worry, I'll just go off to the hardware, get myself one, they're cheap. In the meantime, I'll just use a bit of duct tape. I started off the process using a cordless drill with a screwdriver bit in it, and then finish it off by hand with the actual screwdriver. Just made this a lot faster, and then, because I'm using it by hand, I didn't go overboard and do it too tight. I've already added the duct adapter which converts it from 120 millimeters to 150 and then screwed on the 120 millimeter duct. Rather than trying to set up the ethernet or the Wi-Fi, I'm just gonna uh, connect the computer straight to the laser cutter by using a couple of USBs there, one for the computer and one for the actual camera. In the little plastic box that I showed you earlier, it has the remote interlock and the keys. Now the remote interlock needs to go into the back of the machine. Now the two units are held together by a wire tie, so to, when you snip them off, you've got to be very careful you don't snip anything else, so be cautious in that little section. And this is what the remote interlock looks like, and this is where it goes. First, the power cord into the back. Now, 
that's the little plug for the connection just above that is the beam attenuator and you need to turn that right up you then switch on the power at the back head over to the front using the key you switch on the main power and all the lights come on now it's starting to get exciting we get to play and we get to cut and engrave things almost Included on the USB stick is a light burn, which is the software you need to use. This process is so quick and easy. First thing you do is hit devices, head over to find my laser. It then communicates with the laser and gets all the necessary details. And you use the second one, which is on COM3, add device. And you can either leave the name the way it is or change it like I'm doing here to Polar 350. and double check the sizes which is 510 by 300 the laser head sits on the back right so you need to click on that then click next double check all your settings there looks great hit OK and you're ready to go believe it or not told you it was simple and then it pops into the correct dimensions for the bed I won't get into how to use light burn in this particular video because I do have another video that goes through it with, uh, with a bit more detail and as my test print I'll be using this project that my buddy Gary designed it's a paint stand so we're going to use this as the very first print now if you have a look you've got two different colors here for the outlines now the very top one is blue now everything highlighted in blue will print first because that's at the top the second one is black and of course that'll print second now in this project I'm using 3mm um, MDF so we need to run that at about 17mm per second at 100% laser strength. Those settings are just added to the middle right there. Now let's have a look what it'll look like uh, in our little preview window. And if we hit play it'll show you that we're cutting out the circles first. Once those circles are cut out, they'll drop out of the way. And if we did the frame first, that would drop, and then we'll have a bit of alignment issues with the smaller circles. Once we're happy and we've double-checked everything, our next step will be to frame the laser. Having said that, we actually don't need to do it in this particular project. We're using a full sheet of 500 by 300, so we can go straight into cutting out the project. This is sheet 1 of 10. So you're looking at about five minutes per sheet, so about an hour's work to create that uh, paint stand. This is our instruction system that I've got coming straight out of the laser and just going straight out of my roller door. This is the actual remote control to control that ex extractor fan. And you get your basic uh, controls, fast, slow. You can set up the timing as well, turn it on and off. Really simple device. And you can see on the left-hand side of the screen how much smoke is being sucked uh, with that extraction fan. It's very efficient and does a great job because there was a lot of smoke coming out of this MDF. An hour of cutting, 15 minutes of assembly, and this is what we got. Very cool looking stand and it actually works really well too. With the success of our cutting project, I thought we might have a bit of fun with some engraving. Now I'm gonna do my own logo because yeah, why not? <laughs> I'm gonna do it on three millimeter acrylic and we're gonna have a bit of a go at that. And because we are actually engraving rather than cutting, our speed and power settings are gonna be very different. We don't wanna cut right through it, so we need to lower the strength of our laser. In this particular instance, uh, I'm gonna have slightly different uh, settings for the scale model and the geek. For the word scale model, I'm going to have them as an outline. And for the word geek, I'm going to have that as a solid fill. That's simply adjusted in the cuts layers menu. And you do that in the mode section. So at the moment, scale model is in black. And you can see it's lined up as line. And the blue section is the fill. It's just a matter of just clicking on the right menu and adjusting that. Very straightforward. For the moment, I've just set them both at line just to show you the difference. You can see they're both outlined. And the blue one, I'll change to fill. Let's go back to the preview window once again. And you can see the geek is now solid. Of course, because the geek is solid, it's going to take a lot longer to actually engrave. It's got to do a lot more passes, obviously. 
Now, of course, I really do not want to use up a whole sheet. So I'm just going to rearrange it, spin it around and move it over to the side. So I'm just using uh, just the side section of the 3mm acrylic or plexiglass, same type of stuff. If you are going to engrave some plexiglass, I do recommend taking off the top protective film. Again, because we're using a full sheet of 500 by 300 millimeter material, we won't need to frame the uh, laser up. We can just hit start when we need to, when we're ready. You just need to make sure it's squared in onto that honeycomb plate. And then we hit start and we're off. The whole logo is about 200 millimeters wide, so it took about ooh, 30 minutes to engrave this. And the final result, well, it's pretty awesome. The word geek came up really evenly. It's got a great consistency in the passes of the laser. My only criticism would be the plexiglass end up with some slight warping in it. Would I recommend this laser? Hell yeah. Is it pricey? Hell yeah. For me, this is a great addition to my workflow because not only do I do scale modeling, but I also do a lot of woodworking. This also opens up a lot of business opportunities like making those paint racks. First impressions of the unit are great. Over the coming months, once I dial in a lot more settings and also give it a good test run over those couple of months, I'll do an update video and let you know how I'm going with it. As part of the collaboration with Omtech, I've got this great special that's happening at the moment. If you use my promo code SCALEMODELGEEK, you'll get some great discounts on this laser from their website. I'll leave all the links and details in the description. Go check it out. Like I said, I thoroughly recommend this laser. It's big, it's solid, and it's powerful.